No, on a Saturday morning, we'd love to catch up with Leith Van Onselen, who uh, joins me on the line from macrobusiness.com.au. How are you, my friend? I'm good, thanks, Luke. How about yourself? Excellent. I'm very well indeed. Leith is the Chief Economist at MB Fund and MB Super, macrobusiness.com.au. Uh, I look at it every day. Excellent stuff. Mate, lots to talk about this week. The national accounts were released for uh, quarter four and it seemed to me that even though it wasn't glowing news, uh, old mate Jimbo, the treasurer, found uh, found a way to say, you know what, that's not bad given where the world is. But what did you make of it? Look, uh, you know, good old, our old mate Jimbo is a politician and politicians will always spin a narrative to suit their interests. Uh, look, it was, you know, it's a pretty poor result, to be quite frank. So uh, the, the Australian economy grew by 0.2% over the fourth quarter and by 1.5% last calendar year. Now, that, on the surface, that's growth. You think, ah, oh, that's OK, at least we're growing, that sort of thing. Problem is, Australia's population grew by 2.6% over that time. So we went backwards per head uh, by 0.3% over the quarter and uh, 1% over the year. So it's just another case of this per capita recession grinding us lower. And if you actually look at the internals of the result, it's actually even worse. So we're basically, one of the main reasons why we've grown is we had a big jump in net exports because demand for imports fell and the way the national accounts work, that you know that, that increases growth. But what we all care about, Luke, is what, what's, what's happening to Australian households because we're households, we live in that economy, we're not exporters, we're not businesses, we're not government, we're households. So that's that's the thing that we care about and Australian households are going backwards at a, you know, at a rate of knots. So... Real, real per capita household consumption plunged by 2.5% last year. So that was a lot worse than what the Reserve Bank had been um, had forecast. So in its November statement of monetary policy, Reserve Bank forecast that household consumption, this is before population, uh, with population growth, would be 1.1%. It then revised that down in February to 0.4% and end up coming in at 0.1%. That's before you adjust for population growth. And so basically the household sector is a lot weaker than it, than it anticipated. Uh, consumers are cutting back a lot harder than it expected. This has been reflected in really, you know, weak retail sales. Only the number of hours worked in the economy has collapsed over the last six months. So the only silver lining to all this is it means that the Reserve Bank's, you know, more likely to cut interest rates in the second half because the economy is stalling worse than what the Reserve Bank had expected. And and look, you wrote, there was something you wrote through the week that really jumped out at me. I might just, uh, without notice, go and find that. Uh, and you say... Uh, recall that the RBA's February statement of monetary policy projected that unemployment would end this year at 4.3 and only peak at 4.4 next year. And you say shortly after these forecasts were released, the ABS released the January Labor Force survey, which revealed Australia's unemployment rate had gone to 4.1. And you say the internals were even worse. But if it was meant to top out at 4.4, 4.3, at the end of the year, and it's already at 4.1, you make the point, don't you, that unemployment is going to be a significant driver of rate reductions? Is that right? Have I read that right? Yeah, spot on. So so basically the Reserve Bank is uh, is is drinking the Kool-Aid if it thinks that the unemployment rate's <laughs> going to peak at 4.3%. So it's already at 4.1% as of January, so that's the most recent data, with 11 months to go to hit its 4.3 target. Now, all the indicators are showing that the labour market's going to, the, the unemployment rate's going to shoot up. So the, there's a survey that was released on uh, on Thursday by SEEK, and what that shows is the number of applicants per job add, and that has soared so far above the pre-pandemic level. And when you actually plot that against the unemployment rate, it shows that it's a really good leading indicator. And that just tells you that the unemployment rate's going to shoot up over coming months, maybe not necessarily next month because it's always number wing, but if you look at, take a six-month perspective, it's going to shoot up. And, um, and 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 I and I firmly believe that Australia's unemployment rate is going to be you know closer to five percent by the end of the year, not necessarily at five, but maybe four point eight or something. Yeah. But certainly not four point three, and not peaking at four point four like the RBA anticipates. And all this means is that say say the unemployment rate hits at four point three three, uh, you know, forecast in uh, May or June. There, it, you know, we were already would have been way ahead of what the RBA was expecting and it'll just force them to have to cut rates quicker because it's just another sign that the economy is slowing a lot faster than what is suspected. And pretty much every economic indicator that's come in, in the last three months has been worse than what the only, uh, than what the Reserve Bank forecast. So d- let me understand that. If, if uh, you predict unemployment will be closer to 5 than 4.3 at the, end of the, at, at the end of the year, 
is is that driven by having rates higher too long? Is it the population issue that you and I discuss here every week? Um, have we made it too difficult for business? Yeah, in as much as I mean, in the unions have just had a, um, a you know almost like a field day with this government getting things up, and they campaigned for it. Fair, fair enough, but what's gone pear, or what's caused things to go pear shaped more than they projected A, and sooner than they projected B? Well, two things, and, and you sort of alluded to it. So first of all, the economy, the, the obviously the interest rate hikes have probably they probably didn't need to do the one November to be quite frank. And uh, so the economy is slowing quicker than they expected, which means that employ, employers don't need to hire as many workers. And so their, their demand and job ads have been falling. But the flip side of that is we're also obviously running this extreme immigration policy. So the labour supply is growing faster. And according to CBA uh, estimates, they estimate that we need to produce nearly 35,000 jobs a month just to soak up the extra labour force that's coming in, mostly through migration. So basically demand's weak at the same time as labour supply is growing massively because of mass immigration. And you put those two things together and it's basically a power to keep growing employment because you're going to have labour supply growing, demand weakening means higher unemployment. Wow. And, of course, we've seen figures from uh, PropTrack, a record low. Australia's rental vacancy rate is now 0.7% in February. This has largely been uh, predicted by you and, and a few select others. We were going down this road. It was predictable. It could have been affected positively by government if they took action. They didn't. And we end up in a hell of a mess. Not only have we got the prop track rental affordability report, we've also had, as you call it, gaslighting from the Greens on immigration. I'm sure you can tie those two issues together. Yeah, for sure. So it was actually, uh, so, so Domain released uh, rental vacancy data this week, which showed that Australia's rental vacancy rate collapsed to an all-time low 0.7% in February, and it's pretty much tight across the board. So pretty much every market in Australia. And then today, PropTrack re- released their latest rental affordability report, which showed that Australia's rental affordability has collapsed to its worst ever level, following a 38% surge in rents since the pandemic. And, you know, as you alluded, this can all be traced back to the federal government's, you know, mass ramp up in immigration. So uh, according to the national accounts that came out last week, Australia's population grew, if you if you run their numbers through the latest ABS population data, Australia's population grew by about 680,000 last calendar year. <laughs> and obviously we didn't build anywhere near that, so we only built about 170,000 homes. And as a result, we've got a massive monstrous housing shortage. And uh, unfortunately, as I said last week, all the leading indicators are pointing to even weaker housing construction going ahead. So um, the latest dwelling approvals data says we're going to build 163,000 homes um, were were approved in the the last, in the year to January, which is basically the forward looking thing. And then also on Friday, the the ABS released housing finance data, which showed that um, loans for the construction or purchase of new houses have collapsed to a record low as well. So basically, you know, I, I think what every Australian should be asking of the Albanese government is why did you bring in record numbers of people without a plan to house them and, and without a plan to provide them with infrastructure? Because that's basically what they've done. Excellent they've just, point. They've just flooded the place with extra demand through people without any notion of where they're going to live and we're living with the consequences through the worst rental crisis in generations. You know, record low rate, rate, rental vacancy rates, surge in rents, people being forced to live in group housing, and more Australians being forced into homelessness. And it's just an absolute policy, um, you know, disaster from the federal government who's basically created this. And it gets lost, that uh, that issue, um, uh, amongst, you know, stop the utes or an arrival of a boat in, in Western Australia or, you know, breaking a promise about, about tax cuts or giving people 15 bucks a week and thinking, well, that sorts them out for a while. I mean, some of those are very important issues, but... It seems to me, and and I was already um, interested in this, but talking to you over the years we've spoken, I've become more and more aligned to the issue that, you know, if if you need 5,000 plumbers, let's say, and and then you need 10,000 carpenters, that to get those 15,000 people, you shouldn't need to bring in 700,000 people. No. You should. You might have to bring in twenty five thousand people, or or forty thousand people if they've got families. I mean, that's that's a reality. So you tell me, six hundred and eighty thousand increase to the population, and while we're increasing population by that number, new homes or new dwellings, one hundred and seventy thousand. 
I mean, that is a, an absolute policy disaster. If you do the mathematics, that's one home per four people in the population, which leaves aside people already here. It is just a, for me, it's the biggest issue of the lot. It's recklessness. It is, and, to, and it's actually a little bit worse than that. So we built 170,000 homes, but unfortunately that doesn't count uh, account for knockdowns and rebuilds. So obviously if you knock down a house and you put up a duplex, like two, uh, two townhouses, you only get one addition. So once you strip that out, it was close mm. to 160,000 160, homes we actually added. Yeah. And uh, you also alluded that the uh, Greens housing spokesman was added again, Luke. So a couple of weeks ago, I said that the Greens housing spokesman, Max Chandler Mather, appeared on ABC Insiders where he basically said that the Greens want higher immigration. He said more people come to Australia is a good thing. Well, Mather then appeared at the National Press Club this, this week where he was asked twice two questions about the Greens' position on immigration. And he said that uh, lowering immigration was, quote, a race to the bottom and a distraction. And he said that he basically doesn't want migrants to be scapegoated for the housing crisis. Now, look, I agree with that sentiment. They shouldn't be scapegoated. But unfortunately, the Greens want even more immigration uh, than, 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 than what Labor wants and what seems what the coalition wants. So we've got basically the three major parties all sort of back this policy. And the <laughs> Greens, who are supposed to care about the environment, seem to love it the most, even though it totally wrecks the environment and destroys the housing market. So, look, it's, you know, it, it's, it's dumb and dumber at the moment, unfortunately. Well, I think we refer to the uh, esteemed gentleman as a clown. He's done nothing to lose that title that he was be- that was bestowed upon him a few weeks ago, <laughs> Max Chandler Mather. And if you if you believe what the uh, political pundits are saying, there's a a strong chance he could have a, a green a green mayor of uh, of Brisbane later today when the election is called to a halt. And the greening of Brisbane, I can only assume, Leith, and I don't know anything factually, but you can only assume, but the the good folk of Melbourne... Yeah, blame Melbourne. And, yeah. yeah, and I'm going to blame the inner city Sydney siders who thought, oh, let's go and live in Queensland, it'll be heaps better. They've uh, infected the political makeup and uh, the greening of Brisbane. Who would have thought? Goodness me. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, us Melburnians, uh, we are the wokest lot in the country. Yeah, shame and, on you. Know, you. We're, Yes, no, no, one hundred percent, mate. I live in, I live, I live down here. I have to put up with it every day. But um, unfortunately, they're 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 spreading their nonsense up up north. And mm. uh, the the funniest thing about Max Chandler Mather is I've actually got a great photo of him protesting against development uh, with a Save Our Suburbs group. So, <laughs> so, so, so the so the guy wants unlimited immigration, basically open borders, but then he doesn't want to build houses because he's because uh, yeah. he doesn't want he doesn't want infill in his suburb. So yeah. he's a complete hypocrite. Completely, or as we like to call him here, a clown. Good to talk, mate. Have a great weekend. Yeah, thanks, Luke. Speak Thank to you. Next time. Yeah, indeed. Leith Van Onselen, macrobusiness.com.au.